Hello, live stream. Hey guys, welcome back to another SJ Games Live. I'm here with Steve Jackson. My name's Hunter, and we're going to be talking about the Ogre Mentors Second Edition Kickstarter and taking some questions and giving some answers. Uh, so, Steve, take it away here. Well, so this is our current Kickstarter. This is a project we've been working on for quite a while. Um, this is the cover that I'm planning to show you. Yep, I think we got it. Okay. Um, Brandon Moore did it. Uh, it's inspired by the cover of the original edition so many years ago, but uh, this is a beautiful job. It looks great. And the other thing that we have here to show you is the colored templates, which will be printed on heavy stock, the same stock that we used for the Ogre Designer's Edition miniatures and counters, and die cut. So you can use the templates to check spillover fire, and you've got big glowing counters to show your, uh, your craters. Nice. And we know some of you are going to be playing with painted ogre miniatures, so I brought a few of these along just to, uh, to show off. This is Ben's work. They're magnificent. They're beautiful. Bins work for scale. So this is what it looks like scaled to these uh, craters and stuff. That's a yes. pretty good comparison. So, mm -hmm. And this is uh, this currently is on Kickstarter. We uh, launched about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago now. And uh, uh, it's got another week and a half-ish to go now. So we, we did fun. So now this has become a hardcover book even. Uh, so we're unlocking even more stretch goals. Plus our ogre sales on Warehouse 23 are going towards... The funding goal, so we've funded even further than the Kickstarter shows. So we're keeping up with that and adding new stuff pretty much all the time. It's uh, it's going very well, and the comments and support that we're seeing online are very. I shouldn't say the support is supportive. That's dumb, but it is. <laughs> it's 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 invigorated. It gives us you know it's it's energizing to see so many people enjoying the things that you're making specifically. Uh, speaking of comments, we actually have a few uh, questions and answers. We actually post this on the Kickstarter, on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we have some questions here from backers and fans, uh, and we're going to go through some of these. And Steve's going to give a couple quick answers. So if people have questions now how do they get them to you yeah just Should simply tweet them uh, you can actually just leave them in the comment of this video below and i'll be looking at it as we go through here uh, once we get to the end of the questions we've already selected uh, we'll be able to pull from this live stream and we'll answer the ones that are best from that as well so just leave a comment below and we will try to get to that at the end okay hit me. cool so from the kickstarter we have a mole of all the people Steve has played Ogre with, company staff, fans, all sorts of people, have there been anyone who has uh, really made you work for a win? And if so, do you care to give them a shout out? Haha. <laughs> well, I guess we will shout out to Fox Barrett and Randy Scheunemann, who helped me uh, with the run up to the designer's edition. We played a lot of Ogre, and I got kicked more than once. I am not the best player of this game in the world. I'm I'm competent. I can stand up and you know hold my own in one of these games like we're doing at Origins sure. with the uh, ten or twelve people all playing against me at once. But there are better tacticians out there than sure. I am, and I like playing them. Well, there you go. And you hear it from the master. Definitely check out that Origins game. We have 12 slots, I believe. They might be or it might be filled already, but check out that as well. Uh, Keith Lewis from Kickstarter again. I enjoy using map mods for terrain creation. Have you ever considered creating a one-hex map board, which allows for a one-on-one -on -one unit battle? So pretty much one hex that translates into a bunch of smaller hexes, kind of like a, a focused-down, smaller version of Ogre. Oh, a super tactical game. Sure, yes. He probably tactical. doesn't mean, let me see what he Ogre wrote. Ogre Extreme Tactical. He, he really wrote one-on-one, -on -one, but <laughs> I don't think he means it. I think, sure. I think this would be something to resolve overrun-type combat with. Ah, okay. And that's a suggestion that's come up occasionally, and we've never really done anything with it. He also says minefields, minefields would come oh, yeah. into play. Yes, it matters exactly where you're sitting. That somebody would have to make up the minefield in advance. Sure. Ogre Extreme Tactical. That's what it would be. It would be extremely <laughs> tactical. <laughs> yes. That's, uh... oh, okay. Yeah. No, I... No, no plans. That, that thought went away again. Sure. Okay. Well, 
So something that's been come, that's come up, not something currently in the works, it seems, but that's a pretty cool idea. I do like do like the feedback. We always appreciate getting feedback from fans. We've had so many fan made creations and fan made scenarios that we've seen online. That's astounding, honestly, the support that Ogre gets from fans. Uh, Eric Krieger asks, uh, "What do you think of the current plastic Ogre minis? Would you ever consider offering resin three D printed minis uh, for obscure units?" Um, and we'll, we'll start with that one for now. <laughs> Well, question number one, I like them. I like them better than I thought I would like plastic. They came out beautiful. The minis look great. Yes, they're, the detail is crisp, and they're weightless, and they're more durable than I had feared. And they take to paint very, very well. Yes, For they, someone who likes painting minis, I was a little bit worried what type of plastic and whatnot takes to paint. They look amazing. Mm -hmm. And resin or 3D minis, I'm not going to say no because that's a logical thing to do for some of the ones that, that you need rare, but we don't have a solution for that right now. Really making those type of uh, models for 3D printing takes the same amount of work for us making those models to make at a printer essentially at this point. So it would make sense for us to make the model, but then again, low print runs and stuff like that. So it's yeah. definitely, we never say never, I think is the words we usually Yeah, <laughs> we have continued to experiment with 3D. We bought a 3D printer and we were disappointed, but they'll keep on getting better. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, it looks like you had some other questions here. Do you have an ogre format you particularly enjoy playing? Pencil and paper, pocket size, designer's edition, any of those particular? Do you like minis on the board, minis on terrain, anything like that? I like minis on terrain, and I like playing with the big board. I like it. I like it when there's scope. Okay, so big scale essentially. Yes. Give, some, give you something to look at. Cool. And he's, he also said thanks for creating Ogre and for your relentless, relentless support of all these years. <laughs> so that's awesome. Thank you very much, Eric, for the feedback. Uh, SG Beal, one of our more uh, uh, vocal fans out there, has done a lot of support for us. Uh, was the future history of Ogreverse, uh, specifically faction and timelines, created on a whim or after a lot of contemplation and extrapolation of the then current political landscape? Oh, that's a good question. There was a certain amount of extrapolation, but a series of whims accumulating over the years, too. This uh, Brazil, for instance, became important in the Ogreverse largely because I went to Brazil and met a whole bunch of very good ogre players with beautifully detailed miniatures with the you know, Brazilian colors and arms on them. I said, okay, we've got to give these guys something to work with too. Some of it was extrapolation, but uh, it's not, this is not the way I hope it will be. The ogre timeline is even darker than ours. Ooh. That's, that is surprising and shocking, but not. I guess it's not that surprising right now. Uh, Things could always be worse. Sure, that's true. Uh, is the, yeah, this is SG Billion. Is the Pan-European Union a single country by modern standards or collective like modern day EU? And if it's the latter, what are the most significant member states? That's a lot of background questions here, actually. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Well, France and Germany dominate, as they do in Europe today. Italy is important. The Vatican City retained its, retains its independence and has its own ogres and it's so on. One of the most popular factions, according to our fans, a lot of people like, they want the Vatican ogres. <laughs> well, purple and gold. They, they like look, it. They look cool. <laughs> but... Uh, there's nothing exactly today like I visualized Pan-Europe being. It's, uh, there's less national sovereignty than the EU has now. Uh, there aren't, there isn't a French army or a German army, mm -hmm. but there are certainly French and German units, you know, drawn, okay. drawn, nationally, so there will be fewer language difficulties, um, and fighting under the pan-European banner. It's kind of a mess. So you might have like a like a French infantry unit, and maybe this unit over here is a, is a French tank unit or something like that, but they might not intermingle with the other ones just to keep the languages. I, I, that actually makes a lot of sense. Well, if they're both French, they might sure. mingle, but, <laughs> but if the uh, artillery company is uh, Spanish, then you're going to need some translators on the staff, sure. or some bilingual people, which of course are much commoner in Europe. In, sure. in Europe, you're not educated if you don't speak multiple languages. And in future Europe, where everything's pan-Europe, then <laughs> maybe even more so. Maybe more so. There certainly will not be agreement on an official language. Oh, yeah. Not going to happen. <laughs> I doubt that. 
Uh, well, we got another one here. Evil Will. Uh, any thoughts of heavily armed aquatic ogres? Uh, we'd love to see a version that would play on an ocean and in its depths. Okay. Um, I guess the short thought is potentially awesome. You would be depending more on munitions that had their own propulsion. Uh, the, the underwater ogre would probably be mostly missiles. Detection would be a bear. That's true. A, a lot of torpedo type stuff, maybe even depth charges coming into play there. That'd be interesting. But could an ogre get away from its own depth charges fast enough? <laughs> Well, the question is, can you get the depth charges far enough away from the That's ogre true. fast enough? Propulsion. So again, it's just a, a torpedo thing. Sure. So yeah, uh, hey, that's a that's a compliment though. It sounds potentially awesome. I think that's a great that's a great step. Uh, I I think that sounds really cool too. Evil. Uh, let's see, we got John P. Solins here. Congrats on the new edition. I've been a big fan of Ogre GED since the early days. Uh, he had a couple questions about this new edition of Ogre Miniatures. Will there be campaign rules in this edition? Uh, linked scenarios, AIs, or tournament rules, any, any or all of the above? Uh, mostly no. Mostly that's left to the players. Uh, the breakthrough and raid scenarios, of course, are always potentially linkable. Sure. But uh, campaign, that really depends on who you've got to work with. So set it up in your club, and then write us and tell us about it. Yeah, please do. Like I said before, we've had so many fan-created, fan-supported things come for uh, Ogre that uh, it's uh, always astounding to see what people are coming up with. So we'd love to see the feedback as well. If we do another Ogre zine, which is certainly still on the table, sure. uh, if we do another Ogre zine, we're going to want some nice, crunchy material for it. And that means right scenarios battle right. reports battle right campaign reports, rules yeah. battle reports are cool we love them but uh, they're they're cooler if they have enough information to let you replay the battle ah that's true that is true scenarios in general so that's something that people could provide that'd be great uh we had a question those are all our kickstarter backers again i want to emphasize this is live on kickstarter right now you can back for the mm -hmm. book you can also back for additional minis if you missed out on ogre miniatures set one and two on Kickstarter, or if you just want more plastic, because yes. who doesn't want more plastic? If you had paint left over, then... <laughs> sure, this is a great time to get on board on that. So books, the, again, the books become a hardcover book. Uh, it's getting bigger and better as we go along. We're going to add some more, even more goals as we break stretch goals. One of, one of the stretch goals we're talking about is an extra, just a little supplementary booklet that would be photocopyable. As you'll already be getting everything in PDF anyhow. Sure. So if PDF is convenient for you, you won't need the booklet. But for those who just want something to refer to on the table, or if, if printing PDFs is less convenient, you'll have it in another format. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're trying to just hand you all the tools. Sure. And we got this last question here from Facebook. It's Roger Ashton Winter. Uh, excuse me, Roger Ashton, Ashton Winter. Ashton Winter. There we go. Uh, up to, he's just asking... Uh, if there's any plans to update the rules for Ogre Thulu and the infantry that it creates. Ogre Thulu and the spawn <laughs> of Ogre Thulu. Talk about whims. That one was a whim. And truth to tell, we don't have, even now, we don't have complete, solid, playable rules for Ogre Thulu and all the things that it can do. But it's also a constant low-level request, and who knows, we might do something more with that. It's a possibility, again, never say never. They were neat miniatures. They are really neat. I ran across a few in our warehouse. I didn't know what it was at the time when <laughs> I found it. I was, I looked, I was like, what is this crab? What is this squishy <laughs> ogre? Yes, and I, I was very happy to see that. I think it won an Origins Award when it came out just for the miniature. It's a great-looking mini. I don't remember. I believe, it, I believe it did. Well, it, it's one of the best things Richard ever did, and Richard Kerr did a lot of those great are minis. great minis. Okay. Uh, we don't have any new questions on the no, Facebook. No but, online questions. Uh, we did have a, a mole, Andy Mole, uh, commented. He said he missed his own question being a answered. But uh, we will uh, post this again online, Andy. And you can rewatch it once we're done. So you'll be able to see your question get answered. Don't worry. It's a, you're the very first question that gets answered. Thank you for sending your questions. And if you have any questions and are watching this after we're done with the live, please leave them below. If uh, we can get to those, we'll get those over to Steve and see if we can get an answer for you. Uh, after the fact, we'd love to comment below. Just keep keep the conversation going. We'd love to talk about Ogre. Uh, Kickstarter this, update. Or yeah, exactly. And we'll be posting this in the Kickstarter update. I will link to this video in Kickstarter as well for any of the backers that didn't catch it on Facebook. Uh, but, guys, thank you for joining us for this. We're really excited about Ogre Miniature 2nd Edition. Please back it on Kickstarter. Thank you very much for tuning in.
Well, no voice. Thank you very much for tuning in. There we go. There you go. We'll see you next Gary time. Gary Owen Radio Voice. Take care.